More than 100 years of combined launch experience, more than 100 successful launches, and 100% mission success. That's the proven track record of the nation's most experienced space launch company. We are ULA, and we've achieved a level of success that's unmatched in the safe delivery of critical national security, scientific, and commercial satellites, all to the correct orbit each and every time. Our Atlas and Delta rockets have supported missions for nearly six decades. That's how we've built a heritage of successful space launches and achieved a number of historic accomplishments, missions to every planet in the solar system and a few places beyond. While other companies can put satellites into a low Earth orbit, ULA is the only American company that can launch any spacecraft into any orbit, including deep space. And we do it on schedule and on budget. And while we make this look easy, the reality is rocket science is really hard. Our nation depends on a reliable, cost-efficient, and flexible launch system. That's why ULA is the only one who can meet America's critical needs. We consistently deliver the military's most sensitive satellites used to support our troops and strengthen our national security. We routinely launch GPS, weather, and other communication systems that are vital to our safety and everyday life. ULA understands that having reliable access to space is more than just a launch. Our missions save lives, explore the universe, and connect the world. When it absolutely positively has to get safely into space, we get it there. And the results speak for themselves. ULA is the trusted choice because we lead the industry in mission success and schedule reliability. And that's the proven track record America needs. We are ULA, America's reliable, proven, trusted ride to space. Hi, uh, I'm Mike Perziquis. I've got a few lessons learned to share from our journey uh, for the last five years. Uh, we started as a merger um, between Lockheed Martin and Boeing, the Delta and Atlas programs. These are uh, rocket programs that go back to the 1950s, and with that comes a heck of a lot of data that's got to be brought with it. Um, it's pretty neat to go to work every day when your mission is to save lives, explore the universe, and connect the world. Um, as you saw, a lot of military spacecraft we launch, uh, warfighter support, um, a lot of NASA support, where we're going to be launching humans next year. Uh, we do a lot of stuff you rely on every day, uh, weather satellites, GPS, uh, telecommunications, uh, pretty, uh, pretty infused throughout all of your lives. Um, we're at 119 mission success events and counting, no failures. Uh, we've got another one coming up in, a, in another few weeks. Uh, the important thing to note here is that uh, every one of these is different. They go to different places in orbit. Uh, they have different purposes. They have to be designed one at a time. Um, the rocket is, uh, is a baseline, but uh, the mission is very unique. Uh, we have 3,000 employees around the country, uh, headquartered right outside of Denver, uh, factories in Alabama and Texas, uh, launch sites at Cape Canaveral in Florida and Vandenberg in California. So we're, uh, we're not quite as global as some of the uh, other companies, but uh, we get there after we launch. So a bit about uh, the journey. Our business case started in 2011. Uh, we had started our, uh, our IT projects after the merger with SAP and standing up the business processes and the uh, manufacturing processes, and we got to engineering third. Um, the key business driver at that point was to replace some of our heritage systems, which were at that point approaching 10, 12, and even older. Um, they were quite obsolete on old hardware and software. Uh, they were redundant. There were two systems, one for each of the programs, two sets of systems, really. And uh, as I mentioned, a, a, a ton of heritage data, uh, going back to many other companies besides just Lockheed and, and Boeing. Um, the business case has evolved. It's, it's now we've finished the early part of the uh, replacement program, and we're trying to uh, infuse that into downstream consumption uh, of the engineering product and to improve productivity throughout the enterprise. So we selected uh, a PLM platform and a data migration platform that was compatible 
uh, to give us the digital backbone across the entire enterprise, not just in the engineering space. And so that was Team Center, and uh, the data platform has been eCubed MI. Um, here's, the, here's the backbone. I, I'm sure it's familiar uh, to you all. We are using uh, eQMI. We have used it for uh, many, many hundreds of thousands, millions of records to get it into the system, and we're continuing to use that on a regular basis. Uh, we're, we're soon to uh, go into the SAP and potentially the HANA world with that. We're, uh, we're integrating to dozens of Oracle and, and Heritage file systems, uh, providing um, all of our reporting for engineering users through the Team Center reporting and analytics platform. Um, so uh, looking back, we've had a few, uh, a few issues. Uh, Team Center itself, we had a, a fairly high user resistance curve. As you can imagine, rocket scientists think they can do everything better. Um, I'm one. Um, and so there was a lot of non-adoption of the Team Center rich client. Uh, about two and a half, three years ago, uh, in response to the global situation uh, with Russian rocket engines, uh, we introduced our Vulcan rocket, new rocket, and we've been designing that for a couple of years. Uh, first new from the ground up rocket that we had the opportunity to, uh, to change the way we do engineering. And so on the PLM program, we had to adjust midway through this. Um, we had a lot of problems trying to force fit our, uh, our old data into new systems. So at least three different times, we had to adjust our, our migration strategy. Uh, the non-adoption of, of Team Center, the complex, rich client, uh, led us to active workspace and to really drive a significant percentage of our users and our use cases uh, wherever we could into the active workspace client and uh, to drive folks into the Tecra uh, TCRA client to get all their reports much easier than the rich client. And uh, that's really helped us with uh, user adoption. Uh, we started with systems engineering. Um, in hindsight, not the best place to start. Uh, I'm sure most of you started in the uh, engineering, configuration management, bombs, bills of material, CAD, and that sort of thing. Uh, those systems were uh, less uh, risky than our systems engineering uh, systems. And so we started in systems engineering. It, it took a little bit to get there, and uh, that did not, did not help. Uh, we started in a complex use case. Uh, so we've optimized that a couple of times, doubled down, and, and really got those users happy. And now with the Vulcan program, we're going all in on 3D model-based enterprise. Uh, we're, we're through the first half of that. We're uh, doing the model-based engineering, model-based definition. Um, using a couple of different products out there to make sure that the CAD is well developed, all the PMI is uh, put together, and we're, uh, we're getting out of the 2D drawing business out of, uh, after 50 years. So um, I think the lessons learned, the bottom line here, the takeaway is uh, don't be afraid to change and adapt quickly uh, to pivot when things aren't going well. Um, things don't always fit the new paradigm. Uh, they, they take a little culture change, and that's the hardest thing there is. Uh, so stay agile, pivot. Uh, so after the Riverview Mirror, 2016 did bring us a, a good bit of success. Um, the Vulcan program has gotten the releases that we need. We're, uh, we're heading up that, that very steep curve. Um, we decided to uh, kind of leave some of our data in the existing mode not to uh, transform that into Team Center. It was, uh, it was able to be brought in and used as is, but untransformed into the new data model. And uh, that's helped us a lot. I think people are more comfortable with it. And uh, since we're flying out our old programs, it's not going to have the longevity. The new, the new Vulcan data is going to be the uh, prime path going forward. So our Atlas program went live just about a year ago. Uh, we, we went from. Uh, about four or 500 users to 2,000 users out of the 3,000 folks in our company are using the system. Uh, with the Delta program added at the end of last year, uh, now we're up to around 2,200 of those folks. Uh, it's pretty uh, ubiquitous. Uh, we've turned from a kind of a, almost a hobby shop five years ago into a very 24-7 critical operation. 
Um, the keys, again, to that are to simplify our interface. Active workspace has been key. One of, uh, one of my guys is here, gave a good presentation on that yesterday. Um, TCRA, uh, for getting our reports and getting those into the hands of the users, has been key. Um, again, leaving behind the legacy data, if you don't need to bring it, don't bring it. It's kind of like moving when you move your, move your household. You just kind of want to throw away a lot of stuff before you move it. Um, and uh, whenever you've got a new product, as we have with Vulcan, um, it really enables you to get away from your heritage processes, which have become very customized and get you into something more out of the box, uh, much more sustainable in the long term. So uh, we were... Uh, we were happy that we had those opportunities. Uh, we got a good measure of success last year. Uh, going forward, uh, we're, we're doubling, doubling down on simplifying our processes, going back through everything, uh, asking ourselves, why do we need to do that? What does the data tell us that we are, are missing here? Um, we do have to uh, retire the old systems that we've now replaced. They are still in use for some use cases, and, and those have got to be... Uh, those have got to be dispositioned. Uh, we're going to continue to focus on the user interface and the user experience. Um, it's kind of analogous to, you know, about 30 or 40 years ago, um, we built rockets, um, and then we changed it to we launched payloads, and now we save lives, explore the universe, and, and uh, connect people. So we focus on our users. We're not, we're not team center people. We've got to get out of uh, IT speak, focus on what the users are going through. Um, we've, we've got a ton of requests. It, it's turned, uh, thank goodness, from resistance uh, across the interface into, hey, we really want to put our data in the system. Can you help us? Which is, uh, which is a very nice change for us. Everything's fitting very well. It looks like we did a, a decent job uh, designing the data model to fit long term. Uh, we've got a lot of connecting of systems to do. Uh, the big one this year is to get Team Center and SAP talking. Um, we've got a lot of innovation to go through, both on the product side and the process side. And uh, we're back to uh, excitement after many years. Uh, very exciting business. So hopefully you'll be watching. You'll see a, a Vulcan here in a couple of years launching. Uh, Atlas will be launching humans to space. That's what I have today. Thank you. <laughs>